Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make this classic looking 1950s style retro sci-fi movie poster. I provided a Photoshop template for you so you can follow along. Its link is located in the video's description or project files. It includes a photo of the New York skyline in the 1950s, this all-metal robot replica from the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still, its death ray visor, the banner of the movie credits, the top banner in which we'll place the movie's tagline, the poster's inside shape, the poster's outer shape, and a paper texture that's been stained, creased, and torn. By changing the paper texture's blend mode to multiply, it'll make the entire poster look aged and worn. We want to hide all the layers, but keep the skyline visible. The quickest way of doing this is to press and hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac as you click down on the eyeball of the skyline layer. This instantly hides all the other layers but the skyline. Make a copy of the layer by clicking on its thumbnail to make the layer active. Press Ctrl J on a PC or Command J on a Mac. If your photo is in color, desaturate it by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift U. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Distort folder and click Diffuse Glow. Make the graininess 10, the glow amount 4, and the clear amount 14. If you're using a different photo, you may want to experiment with these amounts to get just the right effect. Click on the Adjustment Layer button and choose Color Balance. There are three tones, Shadows, Midtones, and Highlights. Choose Shadows and slide Cyan Red to plus 100, Magenta Green 75, and Yellow Blue minus 100. For Midtones, make it plus 100, minus 60, and minus 100. For Highlights, make it plus 100, minus 100, and minus 100. Click on the Adjustment Layer button again, and this time, choose Brightness and Contrast. Make the Brightness minus 100, and the Contrast 16. Let's place all the Skyline layers into a folder. Go to the thumbnail of the bottom Skyline layer, and Shift-click on it. This makes all the layers between the active layer and this layer active. Press Ctrl or Command G. We'll name it Skyline. Click on the eyeballs of the outer shape, the inside shape, the top banner, and the bottom banner. Let's make our skyline gradually darken as it gets closer to its edges. Click on the New Layer button to make a new layer above the skyline folder. We'll name it Vignette. Open your elliptical marquee tool and drag your cursor from the top left corner of the skyline to the bottom right corner of the lower banner. I want to decrease the size of the selection but keep the aspect ratio the same. Go to Select and Transform Selection. Click on the chain link icon between the width and the height. This locks the width and the height to the same percentage. Go to either the width or the height and type in 85%. Notice they both are the same. Click the check mark or press enter or return to accept it. Go back to select, modify, and feather. We'll feather it by 200 pixels. Invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. We'll fill it with black, and since black is our foreground color, press Alt-Delete on a PC 
or Option Delete on a Mac. Then delete the selection by pressing Control or Command D. Let's reduce the vignette's opacity to 70%. Click on the eyeball of the robot folder and make the robot visible and active. We'll add some texture to it. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Texture folder and choose Grain. Make the Intensity 38, the Contrast 0, and the Grain Type Enlarged. Let's add an outer glow to the robot. Click on the FX button and choose Outer Glow. Click on the color box and pick White. Change the blend mode to color dodge, the opacity between 60 and 65 percent, and the size between 190 to 195 pixels. Then click OK. We're ready to set the text. First, let's make the visor visible. Click on the thumbnail of the top banner to make it active. We'll place our text above this layer. Open your Type Tool, click on the middle of the top banner, and choose a font. I'm using Bebas New, which you can download for free at defont.com. For this font, I'm using a point size of 54, smooth, and center text. Click on the color box and type in a bright yellow, FFE 400. Type out your text. This is the actual tagline from the original 1951 movie poster. I want to make the text italic and increase the spaces, also known as tracking, between the characters. To do this, I'll highlight the text and go to Window and Character. In the Character Panel's Tracking field, I'll increase it to 40 and click on the Faux Italic icon. To center the text, click on your Move tool, press Ctrl or Command A, and click on the Align Horizontal Centers icon. Then delete the selection. To move your text up or down, press the up or down arrows on your keyboard. Press T to open your Type tool and click near the bottom middle of your document. For the movie's title, choose a thick heavy font. I'm using American Captain, which you can also download at defont.com. The point size is 110, and the color is white. I'll click off the faux italic icon, type in zero for tracking, and type in 200% for the vertical scale. This stretches your text vertically. Type out your movie's title and click on the warped text icon. For the style, choose arc upper with a horizontal bend of minus 20%. To center this text, repeat the same steps as you did earlier. Click on your move tool Press Ctrl or Command A, click on the Align Horizontal Centers icon, and then delete the selection. I'll slide this line down, and then close the text panels. Click on the FX button and choose Stroke. The position is outside, and the size is 6 pixels. Click on Drop Shadow. The Blend Mode is Normal and the opacity is 100%. Uncheck Global Light and type 139 degrees for the angle. Make the distance 25 pixels and the size 0. Then click OK. Next, we'll add a soft gradient to the bottom of the text. Click on the Adjustment Layer button and choose Gradient. Make the style linear the angle 90 degrees and the scale 100%. Click on the gradient bar 
and click on the black to white thumbnail. Click on the lower right stop and type in 40% for its location. Click on the lower left stop, the color box, and position your cursor to the left of the large box and make the brightness 60%. Then click OK on all the windows. Click on the layer mask of the gradient adjustment layer to make it active and invert it by pressing Control or Command I. Control click or Command click on the T icon of your title to make your text into a selection. We'll fill the selection on the layer mask with white and since white is our background color, press Control Delete on a PC or Command Delete on a Mac. You can now see the gradient through the layer mask. Delete the selection. Click on the FX button and choose Stroke. Make the size 6 pixels, the position inside, and for the color, pick White. Then click OK on both windows. Make the paper texture visible and active. Make sure its blend mode is multiply. I'd like to make the robot have a bit more brightness in its midtones, so I'll click on the thumbnail of the robot to make it active, and I'll open the levels window by pressing Ctrl L on a PC or Command L on a Mac. In the input midtones field, I'll type in 1.25, then click OK. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.